All right, if you watched yesterday's video, this is deja vu. Look at this. It's two LEDs flashing with two transistors. Um, but what's different today is that we're going to be using NPN transistors instead of PNP transistors. So uh, things should look familiar and maybe not. So <laughs> let's take a look at the schematic here. All right. Um, I suggest you watch the, uh, the, the uh, PNP version of this. Um, I'll put a link down below. So watch that one first. If you've come to this one first, go watch that one first and come back here and watch this one and it'll, it'll make sense and it'll give you a opportunity to redeem yourself. Uh, people will know what I'm talking about if they've watched the other video. Um, so here we have, uh, uh, uh a circuit that I've modified a bit. This one looks a bit strange. Uh, but I pulled it out of electronic design. Um, they have a switch here to make it, it flashes and then you, you uh, open the switch and it stops flashing. It just stays on all the time. But I'm going to be using this exact circuit with just a few changes. Here we go. So um, again, same transistors. Um, instead of a six volt lamp, which is that old, really old circuit used, I'm going to be using an LED. And I might as well put an LED on the other side too. That one was just flashing one side. I'm going to be flashing both, both sides. I changed a couple values. I've got some 1Ks here. I've got 10 microfarad capacitors and 10K resistors, just because I have them off the shelf. So uh, those are all the parts I'm going to use. And um, it's a fun, little, fun little circuit. Um, this one is called what do they call this one? They call this one a minimum component flasher. Minimum components. All right. So let's go look at the circuit again. Okay. So uh, this is the left-hand transistor, the right-hand transistor, and the right-hand LED. So I'm going to be putting a scope probe on the. Uh, collector of the other of this transistor. So when the LED is on, the transistor is on and the transistor is pulling to ground. So the collector should be at ground when the LED is on. And then we'll be monitoring the base, okay? And uh, as the other video, you can pause the video here and give a guess what you think the waveform looks like on the collector and what the waveform looks like on the base. All right, the other video gave you a surprise and let's see if we get a surprise here or not. Um, maybe this one's very simple. All right, let's take a look. All right, similar but different. So the LED turns on when the collector is at ground. So this is LED on and LED off. The LED off is, a, is quite slow in this circuit. And so the LED off um, and then the LED on is fast, right? And then here is the base. So uh, we have a ramp up until we get to a certain voltage and then boom, the uh, uh, transistor turns on. So this is our delay. We have a, an RC time constant delay. And then, then, then when the voltage gets high enough, it turns that transistor on and uh, keeps it going. Now the unusual part of this particular waveform is that here is ground. So this is ground. So this waveform actually goes um, about minus two and a half volts below ground. So minus two and a half volts. And when it gets up to about 0.6 volts, that's when the LED, uh, the uh, transistor can turn on. So it's off from minus two and a half volts up to the uh, plus 0.6 volts. And you wonder, wait a minute, Where'd that negative voltage come from? Just like before, we had a weird positive voltage. Well, this time we have a weird negative voltage. So let's look at the circuit again. All right, uh, here is our circuit. We looked at the voltage with one oscilloscope probe here. When this goes low, the LED turns on. And we looked at the oscilloscope trace here, and that had the funny minus two and a half volts. So where's that minus two and a half volts come from? Well, 10K resistor to plus five. Uh, here's some negative, I mean, some uh, grounds. I don't see any negative voltages anywhere. Where's it get a negative voltage, okay? 
Well, it gets a negative voltage when uh, this node is at ground and this node goes to some high voltage, let's say three volts, when it gets turned on here, it's being pulled up, all right? So we have a low voltage here, a high voltage here, let's say three volts in ground, and then suddenly this transistor turns on and this three volts suddenly goes to zero volts. And that capacitor stores that charge, and so the uh, what was plus three here is now ground, and what was ground here is now minus three. It pulls this down, so this whole uh, transistor gets pulled down instantaneously and then starts to bleed up again. All right, so it gets pulled down, it starts to charge up again, and then it finally turns this guy on. So anyway, it's interesting to notice some circuits have more voltages than you start out with. Uh, yeah.